<laughs> Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, Morgan. Thank you. I thank you everyone for this amazing. What? Amazing. Okay, it's just me what? on the dungeon run. I've done okay, this on purpose. Just I just wanted to run. talk with I've Morgan next to surface. my face. I Here, I got a lot of stuff to say and I need I need Morgan to just listen. <laughs> Go oh, on. Okay. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> can we hear you now? Yes, I think you can hear me now. Yes. Okay, now we can okay. hear me. Yep. Okay, I tested it. I went in. It's Think so I... wild to go onto the Twitch and hear the audio because it echoes because we're oh, like yeah. on a two second delay. That's right. Yeah. Which which we do because you you swear like a sailor, as we know. Yeah. <laughs> Just oh. we mute out all of you, all, all of your swears at all times. Okay. Yeah, well, I can't help it. I was born this way. I did. I did want to just let you run with that for a minute, though, and just see, you know, what just what, me monologue. while you you're quiet. You We've never done it. Me. It's like, no, you listen to me, <laughs> Morgan. I need you. To, you are muted. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, oh my goodness, so much happening. There's hype trades happening. Passion level, and vision. We're on our way to a level three hype trade. Oh my gosh. Woo, passion and vision gifting subs. Goofus McDorkful McDorkle gifting subs you are incredible people thank you to all wow. the subscriptions that we're seeing i saw fail waffle i saw ahoy ginger beard i saw uh who else who else who else whisper josephine light bright oh my gosh. you are all twins in subscribed to your one twins thank you twins in. In. what's up Woo. hey friends welcome to the dungeon cooldown uh this is our companion show to the dungeon run if you don't know by now and we're here to talk all things dungeon run and get you caught up and get you prepared for uh, episode 97 coming oh this Wednesday. Goodness. Whoa. Um, I can't believe it. Yeah, this show's made uh made uh, words made possible. That's the word. I was going to say made responsible. <laughs> it's made responsible. It's made responsible. <laughs> this show is I mean, very it's responsible. Kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> We're made responsible by the patrons. Thank That's you correct. They hold us accountable. This is true. Um, no, made, made possible by our Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com slash the dungeon run for all kinds of witch space giving subs. Witch space, thank wow. you. Um, AG McLeod, uh, I see that you said Katie's wearing the hoodie, even though it's warm in LA, but it's actually chilly today. Yeah, it is. So, oh, it, and by chilly, we mean 63 degrees. Yeah, yeah. below 70. <laughs> Which counts for chilly in Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, People yes. in the Midwest are like, oh. <laughs> I hate you so much. It has been so hot here. So yeah, literally like I'm in sandals and shorts when it, or no, I, no, I, I basically throw on a sweater as soon as it drops below 80. It's so nice. It's oh. a treat. It's Gosh. a treat. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, we have some really exciting, it's been, it's, it's some exciting time on the Patreon, actually, I don't know if you know mm -hmm. this, uh, first of all, he mentioned this last week, Jeff Kanata just posted a week in the life of a dungeon run dungeon master this week, uh, including a video and a, and a full rundown where he just kind of takes our patrons through what it's like to, uh, to run the show or, or to, to kind of go through his creative process every week. Uh, really incredible. Uh, that's a really ex exciting. People have been asking him to do that for a little while. And so I know he was happy to finally allow people into his brain a little bit. I mean, who doesn't want to be inside the brain of Jeff Kanata? I know. Right. <laughs> it's just puns. What's going on? It's puns it's and so voices. Puns. <laughs> puns so and, I just watched, voices. Um, has anyone seen Jungle Cruise? I haven't yet. It's full of puns, and Great. I just kept thinking of Jeff. <laughs> it's like, I was like Jeff cannot like write this movie. For Jeff, he wrote, he wrote <laughs> the Rocks character in. Makes sense. Chris, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I appreciate that. And Joral torture too. <laughs> David did process. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Aww. we'll we'll get to Joral torture. Um, I Sweet also girl. just last oh. night uh, I posted pretty late actually. Just last night I posted a cast secret. Uh, more deep dark thoughts with James and Chaw forgot. <gasps> where I, <sighs> Katie, I talked 
I, I, this is not a brag. This is more of like a, this is more of a, I'm almost ashamed. I talked for like 35 minutes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just, uh, just, just it's me like, going like, here's everything going on with James. This is and like an hour everything. long drama minus the commercial. Breaks. I, I mean, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I talked wow. for a while <laughs> about, uh, wow. Turles, about demons, about, about, uh, Shothragad, about, about Frisia Paul, um, all of that stuff. I got, I got deep, deep, deep. As people know from the last time I was on the cool down with Jessica, I am not afraid to go deep into, uh, the, the rabbit hole of lore and try and find yeah. some conspiracy theories and maybe create wild, wacky theories. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Dungeon run conspiracy theories. I know. But perhaps it, most exciting. Jorl's the fifth warden. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Ass. Mine don't make any sense. Saw Mine are just in. like really wild. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I love it. Those are the best kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But perhaps uh, most oh exciting. Oh my gosh, high train. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Um, perhaps most exciting going on on our Patreon this week, This starting this afternoon. Uh, our new show that we talked about last week, Arcane Artistry, is going live this afternoon, almost pretty much as soon as we're done with this show. It is going to be available exclusive only to our patrons for patrons for a few days, where it's going to be up for about a week. So our patrons are only going to be the ones to see it for this week, and then it will go live to the public next week. Um, and our first guest is someone that we're very familiar with, a friend of ours, Ms. Amy Vorpal. Um, and it is Jared and Ron going deep with Amy Vorpal about her work, about her music, about uh, writing uh, games, about everything uh, for like an hour. And it's a really awesome, fun show. We're so excited and we have some more amazing guests on the way. So really, really exciting stuff uh, coming there. So Arcane Artistry, if you're a patron at all levels, get early access access to it this afternoon so Woo, so excited i'll Very watch excited. anything amy vorpal does i know speaking of which Miss Katie Michaels, you, mm -hmm. I believe, were a part of the very amazing D and D celebration this weekend. I was. It was such a treat. Yeah. Um. With yeah, in, in a game DM'd by none other than Miss Amy Vorpal. Yes, it was a wild ride. It was synergy. Um, it was synergy. <laughs> yeah. I just love Amy. Uh, it was a Benny Hill style chase <laughs> sequence, basically. Yeah, and she did such a fun thing. Time. So you roll a D8. There's like eight portals and you roll a D8 and it decides you, each round you roll again and it decides which room you go into. And sometimes wow. you end up with other players and sometimes you're on your own. Wow. And it was very fun. It was very yeah. fun. It was a very good way to do a chase sequence yeah. in a D&D &D game. Amazing. Which can sometimes be difficult. <laughs> yes. Execute, technically. That's is that up on the YouTube yet? I know they, I know the D and D. So it was part of the, on the official wizards of the coast channel. Yes. Uh, yeah. It was on the official wizards channel, but I'm not sure if it's up yet. I haven't seen okay. it. I'm sure well, it will be though. I'm sure it'll so. be up soon enough. Uh, so be yeah, on the lookout for that. Fun. It's Katie and the cast of the guild DM'd by the amazing Amy Vorpal. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was and friends of the guild and so. friends, the guild and friends yeah. and guild and friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um katie michaels and yeah, it was super fun they're very but, fun very yeah. nice it was silly and everything Amazing. you could expect of a benny hill chase sequence dm by amy vorpal i mean i, I, I see I, have, I need say no more i expect a lot of that so I'm <laughs> yeah, looking <forward>. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's incredible uh it was great um how was your weekend my weekend Exciting? was good uh it was hot here uh caught up on some tv um taxes fun adult uh. stuff <laughs> are you in your taxes right now morgan october 15th is the extended deadline oh yeah yeah that's all right yeah let's not make this about taxes can we just talk no. about other things i actually get a hard time <laughs> from my friends for always talking about taxes so i'm glad you and i are on the same page um this is like, why katie loves to talk about taxes <laughs> like, this is why. it's like <laughs> <laughs> why are why are Morgan and Katie leading uh, producing the dungeon run now? That's why. <laughs> That's why. That's why. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the cast left the Zoom call. We're like, let's discuss taxes. They're like, oh, oh my yeah. internet connection oh, is no. choppy. Oh. I'm out. <laughs> uh, yes. Corporate played. Katie just had a mini heart attack. Wait, taxes are now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> They are if you're slow. Uh, <laughs> like, Every year, gotta like love the me. extension. We have um, so many so patron many. questions. Whew. We're stalling. 
but let's let let let's before before we dive. I mean, let's first thoughts. Episode ninety six. Um, we're in jail, Katie. Uh, we're in jail. I don't, I don't know if you remember that. I do. <laughs> Shafrika's oh. the dungeon run from the IRS. <laughs> A great movie. Well done. <laughs> Would watch. Uh, <laughs> ah, what a wild episode. I, you know, I knew I knew as much as I like wanted our disguises to work, I mm. knew there was no way. Because I knew there, there was gonna be or very, very small chance that we were not right. gonna like get too far. I didn't necessarily think it was gonna be immediately <laughs> that we'd be found out, but there was a ticking clock on it and, and on the suggestion too. And that, that's, yeah. I, I think like as soon as we got to the portcullis and you, and we saw that mage coming towards us, I think, yeah, that was when I was like, okay, these disguises are going to go down and they might dispel his suggestion. So, um, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I saw that coming and was like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, you start Luckily talking. he got his information out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. I was worried when he, Jeff was like doing all the other people. I was like, good Lord, we're not even going to get the, what we need, but we did. Like, yeah. there were so many ways that the Beal thing could have gone horribly wrong. I mean, I mean, did it go right? It went about as right as it could have. And the only for other his, way. Per, for his section of it, I think, yeah, we got what we needed. Yes, I, because, like, if we'd had to fight him and kill him or something like that, like, then the only way we're getting more information out of him is if James casts Speak with the Dead in front of Purse to Samuels. Are, we, is, are they going to let him do that? I doubt that very much. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I don't know. And Beale does not strike me as a person who is going to confess willingly. <laughs> so i yeah i don't unless we were somehow able to get past the guards totally and actually like let beal confess to purse to samuels i i don't know what other uh what other way that could have gone and still be considered a success does that make sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i i i think it was for all intents and purposes successful yes um yeah i mean i think uh as much you know i i i think we i think we knew our seeming was gonna not gonna last it was gonna get us in the door which it did and she did. and then it was going to be about uh our ability to talk and and that's i think what we wanted to do i mean james wanted to talk to persta in the dream originally and you you lily katie kind of talked him out of that and why wisely i think because especially as we learned of this last episode i don't think that would have been received well no <laughs> <laughs> don't think she'd no. have been the type to go like okay yes in my dreams let's have this conversation dude she's uh, definitely like lawful she's a lawful character to the t like lawful yes good me i think but i lawful. think yes uh yes fail waffle and i were just discussing this in the discord i think she's lawful good she's definitely problematic uh problematic faves uh everybody has their problematic phase everybody and i i like her a lot too but she's she's messed up a few times uh it's just a matter mm -hmm. of how she uh accounts for those failures or, yeah. or mess ups yeah well i mean we saw it at the end of last episode though her i i was hopeful at the end of the last episode because i was like all right so she is she is reasonable totally she's just very lawful right lawful so good lawful good or lawful neutral she's definitely doesn't yeah. seem lawful evil that's that's no. good um and lawful. i mean lawful i say good in the sense that she was like they shouldn't be eating rat feces <laughs> The, that's not how we run our prison she she sent people you know? to bingle she did send yeah, people to yeah. help bingle that was that i was would a... say she's good but she's but she's by the book like yes. by yes. the book and the fact that we broke the rules is an issue like the fact that even though we were doing something good and sometimes you have to break the rules to do something good that's right. not how she sees things it right. seems so yeah i'm definitely curious how that's gonna 
go. We're still in jail. <laughs> I know. We're, we are still in jail. It's looking good, thanks to a, a certain someone's 26 on a persuasion check. Well done. <laughs> uh, good job. Good job. Uh, it was definitely the right ones of us trapped in the jail cell, by the way. Um, Seriously. I, I think maybe going to prison in order to talk to her maybe was the only way that that could have gone um, and the good thing about this is she's in control right so she, so mm -hmm. we're not threatening her right. we're not we did break the law which isn't great but in this position we're now just reasoning with her on her turf right on her terms she, as you said she's by the book and we are going for the moment we are going by her book yeah yes and uh so this is how we're gonna do this it just um, depends on how long this law legal system is going to try and keep us in jail correct we did save her city and now it's about just trying to remove the moratorium i it's is absolutely true and so and i think she seems to be listening to us i think that this leads to well hang on let's let's go to some of these questions because i know yeah. a lot of the questions have to deal with this good idea um hmm oh goodness 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 okay uh <laughs> my question from fail waffle um for both morgan and katie i wish we got to see the role play play out of james confessing that he did in visited slash invaded depending on your perspective first to in her dream it seemed like james truly wanted to come clean about it and just be honest is that true um yeah i i think i think once we did get the sense that persta was um above on above board at least at least not I, I could still be wrong cross my fingers she i you know i did still get the sense that she is a reasonable person she's seems to be listening to us and so once that was true yes james was trying to be cards on the table as much as possible we'll get to right. the other aspects of that um, Katie, what was going through Lily's mind leading up to and during the interaction with Persta before and while in jail? <laughs> uh -huh. um, I mean, we've I, kind of been talking about that. But. We've kind of been talking about it, but I, I really do think like Lily's perspective on her is we have to keep a cool head because mm -hmm. us and attempting to be like passionate, but reasonable, like right. persistent, but reasonable, because I feel like once Lily's meets her and like lily's good at reading people right that's right. like one of her strengths yeah and she's like this is a person who if we get aggressive if we attack her we're it's gonna it's gonna ruin our chances so lily's whole thought process is like how do we like try to persuade her and like go as far as we can with being aggressive in that without yeah. getting without getting her to shut shut down and not listen to us anymore like that's what lily's big balancing act is trying to focus. yeah i think it's still up in the air a little bit like it definitely feels like it's heading in the right direction yes but but we'll really find out this week in terms of like how if how she's she's doing like Persta right now is doing her due diligence she is making sure that the stuff from beale checks out you know and how long is this going to take because time is of the essence and where we may have to apply more pressure is if it feels like we're going to be in here for several more days. Well, and that's the thing I think that's making Lily uneasy is like, okay, I feel like she's listening to us and she's hearing, look, Abiel is guilty, this is happening and this isn't wrong. But that doesn't, just because those things are true does not necessarily mean that she's gonna forgive us for doing magic. Correct. She also seems like a person who could be like, thank you for your service. I will use the information you gave me. You still broke the law and you still have to serve the term. Like right. I could see her also doing that. Right. you know like she did she hasn't given me i feel like we're going in a positive way as far as her realizing what needs to happen yes i'm not sure if that is going to excuse us from what we've done right if that makes sense and you know what the punishment is is for that yeah. i know has been a question because, because she because... is so lawful right I, her completely pardoning us would be a very big deal for her it seems like or i mean look she is lawful but also laws change we can say this by by the fact that the law you know the mm -hmm. the law the moratorium of magic itself is only what two months old you know yeah. three months old um so 
literally, I mean, that's that's another thing where if she continues to hold on the moratorium, it's like, you know, your laws are no good if they're not protecting your people. And by the way, magic is what saved your city right now. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise, as you said, I think last episode, you know, the, like they just would have come charging into the city and we were the only thing stopping it. Um, uh, and she thinks magic is destructive. Right. And but I think we can try to convince are. her otherwise. It's so true. <laughs> Rabbit Attack Goat says, are we both feeling positive about the consideration Persto was giving to your words, please, whilst in prison? I think so. I think so. I think we're heading in the right direction, but maybe not fast enough? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I'll go ahead. Keep going. But do you think that she's still going to need further proof of your motives, like from the Duke, uh, Fesh adding his voice, etc.? And does James still think he's going to have to reveal his role in bringing the moratorium into being? I was just uh, talking about this uh, deep, dark thoughts on James's show through God, actually one of, one of the, <laughs> for maybe about five or 10 of the 35 minutes that I saw. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, and there is a part of James that really wants to come clean. Um, James is trying to be more honest now. He's tired of hiding all this stuff. But what it will, I think, come down to is if we can get her to lift the moratorium without confessing, um, then, then maybe it would be foolish of James to still confess and get himself locked up and hurt and hurt the team and hurt and hurt all of Ein, really, if if weakens weakens the party. Yeah. She's tricky, right? Because it's like, we're a team that loves to come clean and apologize, but with someone who's lawful, right. they're not just necessarily going to get like, thank you for telling me you're forgiven. <laughs> you Which, might get, you know, like right. it's, it's, it, it, we do have to weigh these consequences with her. Uh, right. Uh, 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 Witch space says she's never letting you out. If you confess, maybe that is a fear. However, if James can prove she is lawful, if James can prove that, again, he used magic recklessly, yes, but used it to protect others, and that that Yelming's that guard was um, hurting people, which he was, um, then, then there is uh, an argument certainly to be made that it was a justifiable homicide, uh, you know to steal a law and order term. I think it's also a good thing to see how she reacts to one thing before we get to another, you know, like right. how does she handle this and ha like one step at a time with how she feels about us. Cause right now I still like, we're still on slightly thin ice with her. Very much so. Absolutely. Yeah, like we, we want to, you know, what's going to, and also what's, what's most beneficial to everything. Right. Like, right. like you said, like right. is confessing going to do us good or is it going to, make everything take longer and be messier and right yeah it's uh, oh man because it's uh gonna be a problem well it, and even if what i'm talking about is even if james can prove all of this even if james can say you know yes i killed him but but here's why and here's why it was justified um that'll take time and as jessica pointed out last episode time is short and so yeah. it is, it is rabbit attack goat. It is a tricky sitch. I agree. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah, it's great. <sighs> I mean, Jeff, Jeff's put us in a real, that's what he's doing in the second act of uh, Dungeon Run, I feel like, is he's putting us in more and more of these situations where there's no right answer. Yeah. And there's actually no ideal answer, like a lot that's of the time. true. I. Yeah. We've, we've talked to Jeff about this uh, uh, in between shows and stuff. I don't know we, where he and a lot of dms have 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 this problem where the higher level your your characters get the harder it is to challenge them uh where because like dnd &D, like by the nature of it is like meant to like break the game the further the higher you get yeah and i think jeff is choosing to make our challenges more cerebral and yeah. he's giving us like emotional challenge rating problems versus like <laughs> character combat challenge rating no we're in like <laughs> level 20 emotional challenge rating yeah yeah god i, I, I think we're not even there yet i think I, he's gonna make it harder for I us as know. this game goes I, on seriously not knock on everything <laughs> knock yeah on everything. 
I know. So, so yeah, uh, this is something else I, I discussed in my private time uh, for the Patreons. Uh, is that your private Patreon time? My private Patreon time um, was that I, I, the another thing that might get J- James to confess is fearing that someone else might be punished for his crime if because because even if they lift the moratorium that crime of of the guard is still out there and there's that's an open case and so oh man yeesh lots to consider yeah i mean i really think we're in a we're in a one step at a time kind of situation with kirsta and like yeah figuring out how she's going to deal with us and figuring out i mean i really do think like we have a good example in in our near future of like we right. did something wrong how is she going to right. is she going to let us off the hook at all or see why we did what we did and understand that or not like and that's going to give us a lot of information yeah of how we do handle these things i think i mean one thing that might quicken the whole process is the demons are still out there the demons yeah. could be attacking the city like right you know in like any second any second which is very scary to be in jail if that happens with For our sure. magic collars we- on oh my god but then would she let us out yeah you know i don't know god. yeah can you imagine the demons showing up and we're still in our collars oh man <laughs> yes i can yes. i can i can absolutely imagine that happening and i'm scared of that happening uh, yeah uh, aqua blue okay. what if we get expelled what if we get expelled from from turles i mean that wouldn't be the worst thing that wouldn't be great but it wouldn't be the worst thing in fact amongst the better five, than think, being left in jail <laughs> honestly i would say amongst the five of us I think I could say this, that we were like, all right, if we, as long as we get ourselves cleared for murder, if we don't get ourselves cleared for the moratorium of magic for breaking that law and they kick us out of the city, we'll just go like, all right, fine. <laughs> then we'll keep going yeah. on our way. For sure. <laughs> Expelled is way better than us having to break out of jail and be yep. outlaws once again. Yep. Like that's worse. Right. That's worse. Okay. Right. We have more questions. We, we have get so many more questions. Um. Okay, well, Dr. Spark says, what are Katie and Morgan versus Lily and James' thoughts on Joral and how oh. their actions have impacted him? Do you feel you or anyone can have a positive impact on him? <laughs> or Joral. He's so uh, tragic. He's so tragic. Look, um, Morgan, <laughs> wonder, Morgan wonders if Joral can be saved. <laughs> from himself from himself from the universe that seems to want terrible things to happen to him from Um, jeff (laughs) yeah katie wonders if Doral can be saved from jeff (laughs) seriously i was like (laughs) the the joke has gone around discord i think at this point it's just sort of like maybe we should leave him in prison so nothing worse happens to him (laughs) i'm free Uh, and then he just gets crushed by a giant boulder i know look i mean it's I think still having to free Jor get Joral because up to now all almost all of the bad stuff that's happened to Joral has been James's fault. Yeah. That's not unfair to say. And so James will very much uh James will very much do whatever he can to to remove Joral out from under that. Now, if the universe have if the universe has more terrible stuff in store for him, yeah. I, I can't control that. <laughs> I definitely think that we all players and t te- like player our characters and our peoples all want Jorel <laughs> to find happiness. All yes. of us. Because yes. he's just a person you're just I want to see something good happen to you. Right. You've done nothing wrong. <laughs> I know. Um, please, please let something good happen to so him. So I th- I think we're all on that same page. It's yes. just like this poor guy is he's gotten persecuted for so many things that didn't ha- he didn't have any responsibility for. So. <laughs> um, um, Brian Hughes asks, now that James and Lily are in jail, do they have any resentment with Siv for not coming in or Uggo for running when it went bad? <laughs> um <laughs> i actually i don't this made Do me you? laugh no it did make me laugh i don't um but i get it <laughs> but also it yeah. did make me laugh when someone did point that out of like i love that uggo was the first one to confess and then he was the first one to run. I know, I know. that is funny <laughs> we did it bye <laughs> We're the heroes of Bengal. We did it. I'm out. <laughs> Bye, guys. Uh, cool. that, 
that did make me laugh. Now, I yeah. it was totally true to Ago's character when it looked like mm-hmm. we were definitely going to jail. Uh, you know, that is all <laughs> it it made sense and I got it. But it did when looking at it that way, it did make me laugh. It's very funny. It's very funny. Uh, I guess I'm in a, a way I'm thankful that they weren't both there because now if we do get stuck in prison. It keeps our options there, open. There's some option. If we're yeah. all in prison cells with right. non-magical collars on, we're in a much harder place. And if we have two people at least available to do something. Right. Uh, outside yeah. of the prison walls. Yeah, which I think is why we were good with Siv not coming in with us to begin with. Because mm-hmm. I think we knew, as we said earlier, I think we knew that walking in the way that we did, there was a at least a 50% chance that we were going to end up at least in jail temporarily yeah um now hopefully she would have just listened to us without throwing us behind bars first but keeping someone in the field so to speak to keep our options open as we said uh is is was always a good idea i also think that having less people sometimes is better for things like hey this is why we did what we did like and we're and we're trying to be careful with how we're talking to parissa Mm -hmm. like uh, five, three voices versus five voices might be a cleaner way to get our point across because True. we all have stuff to say about it, which yeah. is fine, but it can quickly become like, feel she could feel more attacked by all of our opinions versus just a few, you know? Attacked by opinions, like like how Fesh and Torvald felt. <laughs> no. <laughs> Boy, no, I don't, uh, I I love this tack that, that, that Siv Jared has taken with the, with the natural order. I, um, I don't know if James agrees with it, but also uh, I absolutely think it's fair. (laughs) I think it's, um, I think it's a fully fair way to do it. And so uh, yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable, but uh, really led, led to some, some intense stuff last episode. That's for sure. Yes. To say the least. Yes. Um. Okay, does James have a plan? This is from, uh, oh, sorry, that last question was from Dr. Sparks. Thank you, Dr. Sparks. Right. Uh, this question is from Red Robin. Mm-hmm. Does James have a plan if his transformation is permanent? Mm-hmm. Will he continue to keep Shothrigat as his patron? James, um, your answer. <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm tap on the mic like I'm speaking to Congress. Um, no. Too close. No. You're too close. There. <laughs> I'm sweating. Um, I am no, telling the truth. No, Your Honor. No. Um, uh, does James have a plan? I mean, James has Your a Your transformation des- is permanent, yeah. I James mean, has a desire. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So James has a desire to possibly get out from under this this thing with the old ones, the, this, this pact with the old ones, because he's starting to suspect even more so and feel even more, obviously, that the old ones this is leading to nothing good and maybe he always knew that but he thought he could press it um and thought he could get away with it for a while um where the so we don't have a plan yet but we have clues to a plan right we have this far realm this void we have the obelisks we uh the mention of somewhere out to the west where there might be something i think there's more to be learned with fesh in the library about that and trying to figure out what's happening there. The problem is, is we again have so much to do. Yeah. That if it's a fork in the road moment between we have to do this to save James and we have to do this to save the world. James will not allow the team to pick the first option. You know, I don't think anybody will for any of that, you know? Right. So, um, James, will if 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 that means do if that spells doom for him um maybe it will uh yeah it's if james can go undercover with the demons and find out what they're after i don't know if you've missed the last times james has tried to cast speak with the dead with the demons they're not big on communication (laughs) no it's weird right (laughs) they're not big talkers the demons um yeah but there's more to learn in turles uh about the demons and maybe about james's situation um but i don't know it's so i think i think it we could be nearing the end of James and Shothergot's relationship, but 
but maybe not. Maybe there's a way that this goes further and goes on longer if there's a a, a peace to be achieved between them because it's pretty yeah. pretty confrontational at the moment. Um, but as we continue, yeah. the more you gotta we have a chat with Strasburg. Oh gosh, I know. Well, it's been a minute since we leveled up, and no. you know those always happen right around the time we level up. So it's probably coming. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, we'll see. So, so I guess, do I have a plan? No, I think James, I think James would, would like to, James is, is, has a problem putting himself above, above, putting himself above like the more important things that affect more people. And mm -hmm. so, um, that will, so, so conti he's continuing to play chicken. Uh, you know, he's continuing to play chicken with this and, and, but it means that it might turn him fully into a demon. And if that happens, then he's going to, as I think I've said to, to Ugo and Siv, you may have to take me out. That time might come and I need you to keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's terrible, but it's true. Yes. Um, Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of wishes for Lily to write prison blues songs. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. I see that. Okay. Noted. 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 <laughs> well, Lily is not opposed to a, a, a Johnny Cash prison blues. Oh, turtle turtle turtle's prison. Turtle's blues. That's We're right. Stuck in turtle's prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Up, I love man. it. A shattered a bridge and kingdom just to watch it die. <laughs> Wasn't my intention. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's I could sing a lot of blues songs about things that he's done. I bet. <laughs> no, uh, that's a, knows. okay. David Jim Pro has quite a long question actually for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so D David Jim Pro says what you just said lily dumble stuck singing a trailer's prison blues song all of johnny cash would be a riot um at least <laughs> lily got joral a decent meal by complaining about the rat feces well yes done. that was yep. we did something nice for joral hopefully <laughs> he doesn't have like a food allergy or something that's what i'm expecting to happen that's, right. that's what it is um it's got peanuts <laughs> in it no! it's the peanuts my lips yeah just <laughs> anaphylactic shock um Anyway, it must be quite challenging to stay in character, entertain the audience like the Hollywood pros you are. Uh, listen and respond to each uh, the other actors while mm. also dealing with the challenges Jeff throws at you mm. and at the same time formulating and enacting plans for complex situations, often without, uh, often with incomplete data. Yes, mm. to that. Um, when do you both think, uh, what do you both think are the biggest ongoing challenges for the HOB team with regards to planning and execution? For my part, I've resolved to sit back, enjoy whatever happens, whatever great triumph or hapless and disorganized non-success as unpredictability and as unpredictability and how non-successes are responded to can be more interesting and true to life, question mark, than <laughs> smooth sailing. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, pro. Good observations. And okay. yes, I mean, Thank often, you. often the, the mistakes, the mess ups are more fun, right? Agreed. Like the, the nat one rolls are very fun. Uh, yes. Um, yes. Or, and that ones of our role playing or the um, uh, or the pretending you're the ashen mages friends to go in and uh -huh. get behemoth <laughs> um it has definitely gotten more and more challenging i think in this act two as we're calling it of the thing because mm -hmm. my interpretation of why this is more challenging well there's a couple of reasons but one big one is because our objective has become less very specific this is the next thing we do right it's a little more open-ended and so that immediately makes it more challenging right and you know making a group decision is hard always like yeah. just think about how hard it is to decide where you're going to dinner with your significant other or something like that like right. it, it, it's challenging lots of plate so, spinning yeah lots of plate spinning and also i think the the fun thing is what's happening right now is all of the characters are kind of in like coming into their own as far as adventurers because we were baby adventurers and we were all like scared and nervous and just like trying to follow right. what we needed to do and right. now we all have stronger opinions mm -hmm. which is good but i think the next step is us circling kind of splitting the difference right yes yeah yeah it's um for teenagers there's so many i as i think we've said so many times that like whether it's 
Olsvach or Thorn or Turles, uh, like the problems are so complex where it feels like we could spend weeks and weeks and weeks in these. And, and, and still not have a good answer. Right. Because it's like systemic, big, complex problems. And uh, it's really tricky. And so it's, it's fascinating to play with, but it's also like, oh my gosh. And, and it is keeping your eye on the ball and, and keeping, you know, what, what we're here to do and what we can do about these things just continues to be like one of our most important skills and, and things to do. I think we've, we have gotten better at planning. Um, you, you know, Turles for the most part has gone okay uh you know mm -hmm. the beal plan worked out right now mm -hmm. yes we are in prison but i i i would argue that uh that is not the worst thing that could have happened no, uh, and there weren't a lot of other options really there were not and and we had then, to talk to her so uh the uh, getting to whitebeard's vault worked out so so there's there's a few things miraculously that have, yes <laughs> yes uh there's a few things that have worked out in our favor lately um I think, yeah, communication continues to be the most important thing because we're all, we're all, I mean, I don't even know if we're coming into our own as adventurers. I feel like we're coming into our adolescence as adventurers. I think oh, there's occasionally. That's what I mean. I think we're yeah. all like feisty. And so it's like, we're coming in. That's why I say like, we're in like our teenage years as, as adventurers, because we all think we're adults and know what we're doing now, <laughs> Yes. but we still have so much to learn, it's you know, like so true. it's like, we're all almost ready to go to college. Right. And, are independent and have opinions and you I'm know level 10. yeah i'm level 10 and i've been adventuring for <laughs> four months now or whatever you know like i've Listen. seen things but i do think i do think it'll calm like it's really heightened right now everyone's like feelings and opinions are really heightened right now right and i do think we used to have more give and take but people that are stronger set in opinions right now mm. not that we don't have give and take but like sure there's stronger opinions right now than there were at the beginning as yes. far as like what we need to do next. For sure. And I think that will level itself, but that's just the natural arc of these characters because yeah. we were all kind of uh, starting anew in right. one way or another. Right. Even no, though but... Ugo and Siv had like been in adventures before, they were starting a new life kind of at the beginning too. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, and I don't, you know, continuing to figure out the, the balance of everything and, and there's, and there is part of it where, I'll say this, I think um, keeping the story moving forward and I, I do feel like that we, we obviously can all deal with some very dark stuff in these characters and there is, a, there is a balance to be achieved where I feel like Marvin could... Blade just said, I'm sorry, no, you just no, said as ahead. a father of two, your story just became a nightmarish cautionary <laughs> tale, and I'm shook. Yeah. Yeah. What oh, you wow. really gotta look out for, Garbage yeah. Blade, is when they get old enough. <laughs> They're that they cute get... now. They're cute now. As soon as they get their first amulet, party's over. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it's you know there maybe there is a a campfire episode that we just need to, it's like it's like a party therapy session that needs to happen at some mm -hmm. point <laughs> that's it no ambulance <laughs> <laughs> it's all i mean over. that's that's i've been thinking about the two because i i was like i think our decisions are getting harder but i also do think we're all like yeah feeling like we know what's best a little bit right more so than before and that's also creating more difficult decision making process for us you know and it is sort of a real life thing oh, where sure. we have but we have all of these things are getting a little better with some of us and a little uh worse with some of us mm -hmm. and but but life keeps pushing us forward and like yeah. well but we've got we're running out of time so we've got to do all these things but meanwhile, James is literally becoming more of a demon every day. Siv mm -hmm. is struggling more every day. Fahima, what is going on with Fahima's necromancy and her dark desires of that? A little more every day. And yeah. it's like, yeah. oh, and and so, you Ago's know, like, just not even a barbarian. <laughs> Ago's not a barbarian anymore. <laughs> Ugo has 40 <laughs> hit points or however many he has, you know, and it's like, so yeah, it is like life as, as, I, as I see Ron say in chat, where it's like, where life is just like, 
pushing us forward. It's like, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. And we're like, yeah, but I'm losing my mind over here. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. It's, it's hard to know when you're like, all right, at what point do I go, hey, <laughs> can we stop <laughs> for a yeah. moment? It's yeah. compounding very fast. But it also, again, not to be this analogy to death, but like, it is like the teenager thing where everything is so serious when you're that age, you know, everything is so important. I know. And you're so self-conscious in a way. Like that's what I Every feel for us. Like, of One Tree Hill. <laughs> it really is because we're everything feels serious, which it right. is. Like we're we are talking about big things, but it feels like we're the only. It, we must do this alone. It's so serious, and we also feel self-conscious. I think we all do. As as we all feel a little imposter syndrome as heroes because we're right. like, wow, this has been put on us, and we we don't feel worthy. But also we must do it. And it's just dramatic, you know, yeah. but that's how you are when you're yeah. kind of coming into that. And I, I do have faith that we will round out a little bit right? and become more like, okay, we can work together as a team and we can like, not that we don't work as a team, but you know, we can mesh our opinions a little more. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Guy Mora uh, asks a really good question. I noticed a recent struggle with the team scheming for disguises and tricks, conflicting with Ugo's thirst for truth. How can the team adapt these strategies for seeing that Ugo may not play along one day? Uh, that is a really interesting balance. I agree with that. And I think I think it's <laughs> I think it's Ugo keeping us honest, literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. um, and I because I think James is trying for roughly the same thing as well. Now, I think if I think if your broader purpose is still truth, I think you can get to it through. Uh, manipulative or or scheming means um, where if yeah. we are trying to use certain tactics, but our overall intention is truth, I think we'll be okay. I don't know. I don't know. I say that now, uh, <laughs> but I mean the 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 James question about confessing to confessing to the the murder of of Thad Yelmings is a perfect example where yeah. James wants to get that off his chest and wants the world to know it's um, if more so that just so that no one else gets punished for it. Right. But, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's a gray area. And so, and will he slow us down and, and hurt the overall if, if confessing to it and then waiting for, you know, the justice system to work itself out with him. Yeah. Yeesh. I mean, that's, I think like how, because Lily doesn't love to lie, but she's also very fine to disguise herself and pretend she's something else. And like, oh. yeah, I think, I think Lily's opinion on this is like disguises and lies are often less violent than the truth. Yeah. I mean, you know, it can like, be. Yeah. it's a lot less violent to, it's not honest always, but like mm. if, if truth is the other option and that results in bloodshed, I would much rather lie. Right. I mean, see someone hurt or actually, you know, use, you weapons, know what it's whatever. like, you know what it's like is, um, uh, I talk about this with horror movies and genre movies and sci-fi all the time where some way, oftentimes for an audience, the best way to speak truth to people is through metaphor. It's like fantasy and mm -hmm. through, and to Trojan horse it in something else. No one mm -hmm. wants to see a movie, uh, that's three hours bashing a message into their head. But, you know, but if it's a 90 minute weird little interesting story about vampires or ghosts or something and snuck into that is a real message about whatever is that same message. Um, oftentimes, I would argue the latter is more uh, effective. So yeah. so I don't know if, you know, is that deception? Is that maybe, you know, maybe it is in the short term. But if what you're getting to is still the same purpose um yeah i think you can still do good things that way yeah yes yeah. it's intention right it's yes. it's and it is and it is gray it is like it's yeah it's very much a gray area yeah but it's, i mean it's it's it's, <laughs> it's intention if Ugo just casts a zone of truth on himself every day, at the, every morning to, just to <laughs> i know i'm gonna get persuaded by y'all so <laughs> here we go uh <laughs> Uh, Guy Mora's second question ties into this. Are you, James, are you going to embrace your transformation and get out of the wardrobe? Is that an out of the closet uh, uh, reference? Or or learn a spell of permanent transmutation? Mm. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't... 
a spell I don't want Lily to have to cast a fifth level seeming on me every morning. That sucks for Lily. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I, there isn't a, there isn't a spell that immediately, there is a, there is a, an Eldritch invocation that's, that allows him to cast Disguise Self on himself whenever he wants. I haven't taken it yet. And I don't know if I will, because again, it would detract from other things. Right, and that's only an hour, right? Just yeah, but, but then but he can cast it as much as he wants. That's the invocation of it. It's basically there's no spell slot required. Mm, that's nice. Um, wear a mask. Yeah, I, they, I've i thought about other ways that James can at least soften his appearance, uh, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, more to come on that soon. I don't, I don't know about a permanent transmutation spell. There isn't an immediately easy answer to that. And I don't know if I like the, the invocation that allows me to cast Disguise Self all the time. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, maybe talk to Sloppy Goats first, David Jenko. <laughs> yeah, I think there's I think there's more to be learned there. To be continued on that, for sure. Yeah. Um it's tricky. I know. So tricky. So tricky. I think I think we're gonna learn a lot more because we're feeling good about Purse to Samuels. Uh, it, it, you know, I think we're feeling okay about the way it's going with her, but how fast it goes and how much more, um, convincing she's going to take is going to be, I think the biggest question for, for us in prison, uh, for the first half of the yeah. episode. Timeline is going to be <laughs> really interesting. Too. Like <laughs> how fast is she going to move? What's her, right. I feel like she's going to have pressure to move fast because of the city being under attack, but yeah, it's like, if she's we... lawful, the law is notoriously slow. This is true. So. Wheels of justice turn slow, but they do turn. Yep, yep, yep. I know. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so, and and how long do Siv and Ugo wait? You know, what are yeah. they like? Because they don't know where we're at, and you can't send a sending to them, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> because right. of the caller. How do I ask so. that? <laughs> how do I ask that? Hey, can you take this off? Because. Our friends are probably super worried about us and might assassinate you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Wait, did That's I say a gentle assassinate? way to say I that? I meant. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. We got a really edgy Tabaxi. <laughs> got a real emo Tabaxi right he now. He does not like you. <laughs> no. So, uh, yeah. Which I mean, Lily's not even sure Siv likes Lily right now. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So much to discuss there. <laughs> so much to unpack. I know. Uh oh, Let's... teenage relationships. That's that's a that's a. I know. How is how is Lily feeling about all that? I think I I think people would want to want me to ask you that. Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of told this to Jeff the other day. I feel like Lily's like a little unsure what to do. Weirdly enough, with um, right. Siv because she feels like he's still like listens to her but she doesn't feel like she has the same effect that she used to have on him sure and also he's she you know it's tricky like you, you see someone changing and you want to be there for right. them right but also you're like like it's a very different person than Siv was yeah. you know when really <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah very different very different and sounds so different different name sounds different different name. <laughs> so much of yeah, it, I don't know. Just it's we had a good conversation, but then it didn't seem to. Not that one conversation is going to change everything. No, and Lily sure. knows that, but like, sure. Yeah, it's it's tricky. It's a we're, real tricky thing. We're forced to keep so much in holding patterns. Again, like mm -hmm. like life, we're forced to keep so much in holding patterns that it's it's hard to tell. Like, okay, will this get worse? Uh, you know, or will this will this stay here? And uh, yeah, man. yeah. It's everything. Just I don't know. I could see. I could see it going multiple ways. I could see Lily saying, "Like, hey, we need to take a break. Will you figure out mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. right now? Because this this feels like it's you need time." Or you know, Lily being like, "Okay, I'm here for you. Whatever you need," which are both, I feel like, valid options. Totally. So, yeah, yeah. tricky. Very, very tricky. Agreed. Um, that's a very interesting uh, note, uh, Will Meister. Four twenty person needs a zone of truth to cast uh, cast on her because she's lying to herself. 
Oh. Very interesting idea. Interesting. I don't think any of us have Zone of Truth right now, and Ugo wouldn't have it yet, I don't think. Er, mm. something to think about. Um, yeah, yes. but that's like a, that's a very interesting idea. I really like that concept of like, what, well, does she, what is what is she what does she know deep down but isn't willing to say because of her strong belief in the law yeah and and i think the moratorium has undeniably hurt people and and i know she didn't intend to throw people to the demons she didn't know about that I, but that that is what happened and yeah. and your ability to respond to that is is what's important so and if I you're mean, trying to your reasoning for not using magic is it's violent and causes yeah. damage. Well, look what not using magic did. Right. Yeah. No, I, I think I I do appreciate, I guess, that it does seem like our like Jeff's NPCs. <laughs> Ron, Ron says he needs one more level for Zone of Truth. Uh, <laughs> Jeff's NPCs are dealing with the, the same very... Uh, uh, complex struggles that we are, which is just sort of like, I thought I did this right thing and I'm not sure it was, and now people are getting hurt. And so, ay, ay, ay. Um, so hopefully, hopefully Persta sees, sees the bigger picture and decides to do the right thing. It definitely seems like she wants to help people. So I hope that, hope that goes in the right direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. Which, yeah, I mean, me it's, too. When viewing someone just for their mistakes, of course, there was a moment where we're like, is she evil? Is she evil? Is she mm. is she being mind controlled by the Ashen Mage? Is she secretly the Ashen Mage? And and it is kind of fascinating that so far, <laughs> I, I say this now, could be wrong. Uh, so far, it seems like, no, she's, she's a person maybe trying their best and flawed like all of us. And people have gotten hurt. So hopefully she yeah. can see that that's, that that, isn't the way forward oh boy wow yeah. i think we got to all the questions we um, totally did yes uh we didn't talk at all about the reveal that the natural order are connected to the candle queen from the end of the episode which i knew blew everyone's minds blew my uh, mind uh for <laughs> sure which yeah i think we had applied i think I think we had put on them that they were about neutrality and stuff, or maybe that, you know, or that they seemed, and that they did in a lot of ways seem very passive. Um, mm -hmm. But, but um, yeah, that, that's a big, that, that's a big piece of, of connection with them is that they are connected to the candle queen um, is, is could be huge, huge for Ugo certainly. But uh, that's as, as someone did point out, Jeff had that natural order symbol. He sent it to me before the show started. That's right. I'm just remembering this right now. That natural order symbol, the 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 golden arches and the and the yeah. thing. I was sent that before we recorded episode zero, because I was told James before he left Turles saw this uh, symbol on Fesh's cloak or something like that, oh, and you don't know what cool. it means. And the Candle Queen as we know, did not exist in our world until I went, when was the first, when, when was the birth of the candle queen? I don't know. I mean, it was, it was maybe, like, it was, it was around 10 episodes in maybe longer. Yeah. It was around the bingle times. I feel like is when that the bingle times, the bingle times. <laughs> I feel like that's when it was around. Right. Like, I feel like I remember it happening when we were on the ship. Yeah. At one point. Yeah, that sounds right. Maybe the first, first, let's find that first mention, first canonical mention of the Candle Queen. Let's find that. Yeah, that's um, a good, that's yes, a good. amazing. Um, oh, wow, so much to talk about. We're so definitely much. 104. It's time, but I know. Yes, I could talk all day. All day. Um, There's so much to talk. About. There's so much. Listen again. <laughs> I spoke for 35 minutes by myself last night about the show <laughs> um yep uh and probably could have gone longer uh let's see um again the other amazing thing that happened last week just to very quickly say the the community outpouring was so incredible change mm. box you are a superhero um oh everybody goodness. else though uh goofus mcdorkel um uh 
oh gosh, there was there was so much happening. So many I need names. To, I need to pull up the list. All of the names that were coming in um, that that were so incredibly generous and thank you. Really, this show continues to be such a, a boon for for all of us. Mm-hmm. um and you, you all blow our minds with your generosity and your support completely. truly Thank like you. every every week we get off the show and we're like people are amazing <laughs> people are amazing <laughs> people are so cool and wow, nice wow, and wow. supportive and we just feel thank you thank you yeah, to everybody we feel very virtually hugged every week and i yes. hope you feel the same because we really really appreciate each and every one of you indeed um, so much but uh, um, yeah, so Arcane Artistry, I think, just went live on the Patreon literally five minutes ago. Woo! I'm uh, excited so to go watch it. Go watch it now. Um, let's see. I think that's it for us today. Um, yep. Thanks for everyone in chat. Thanks for all the Patreon questions. We really pre- you, you all bring such good questions every week. I feel like your questions also help us analyze our show in a really fun way. Yes, fun for to get sure. Outsider questions. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Those mean a lot to us. And thanks for all the questions in chat and all those people chatting along. Sorry, we miss you sometimes. Yes. We're, we're talking and doing this, but yeah. Um, I hope everyone has an amazing Monday. We love you guys. Uh, we're going to go raid uh, Xander Genre, friend Woo! of the show who we Ooh. love. Um, have a happy Monday. We'll see you on Wednesday. Humankind, be, be both. both. Bye, friends. Bye.